Hey everyone, so today I wanted to talk about some of my insecurities. Um, so over the course of my channel I've gotten so many comments that are like, I wish I had your confidence and just because somebody uploads a video or some pictures doesn't mean that they're necessarily the most confident person. Sure, there are some things that I am confident about or not scared of, and there are some things that I'm insecure about, very insecure. So I wanted to make a video talking about some of the things I'm personally insecure about, and uh, because it's something I want to work on myself. So I think it's good, A, other people know it, and B, I work on it myself, because being vulnerable is tough for me. It's very easy for me to put on a tough exterior. Those that know me in real life know that I rarely complain about my personal life or anything like that. I'm a very, you know, just kind of like, let's just keep moving forward type of person. But there are things that I am insecure about. And I figure I'll break it into like two sections, I guess like physical and I guess like emotional, mental. So something that I'm super insecure about is I have like a certain type of way that my skin scars. It's called keloid scarring. Um, you can see one here. This is like a keloid. It's like essentially like an overgrowth of scar tissue. I have them on my arms over here as well. Um, and all of these actually used to be bigger. So if you go to like a dermatologist and you have a keloid, they inject it with a steroid and it shrinks them. Um, at least that's the treatment I've gotten that's worked. Um, and they're something that bothers me, especially since my skin, especially my chest and shoulders, uh, scars this way. And that's something I'm super aware of and people point out all the time like, oh, that's like, you know, is that a bug bite or whatever? And it's like, no, nope, that's just scar tissue <laughs> that I have to get injected with steroids to shrink down. Um, and I'm sure many other people have things like keloids or other things. I guess like to me, they're just something I'm hyper aware of because they're on my body and if I get like a cut or a zit or whatever they can turn into a keloid and it's not something you can necessarily have removed usually because if you try to remove it it's kind of like um, a hydra or tomato or whatever the creature is the dragon with like the heads and you cut one off and more grow back so it'll like grow back bigger usually if you try to remove it like if you try to like cut it off so that's why they inject it with the steroids to shrink it and yeah so a lot of times I always put like makeup over them so they're not as noticeable now this one's not a keloid but it is a scar that I have under my lip you can see it like on the right angle so certain angles you can't notice it but I do have a decent sized scar there that I had since I was a child um, and that's something that bothers me and you know might not even have a way of getting rid of it's just I guess part of my face and it's like right in the center of my face so if I look in the mirror I'm going to see that now another thing I am insecure about is facial hair I hate the way that facial hair looks uh, on me and I want to get it removed, but my facial hair is half brown, half red, so lasers don't fully work on it, and I'm not a candidate for electrolysis because of the keloid scarring. So if I was to get electrolysis, there's a chance I could form keloids on my neck and face, and even with the laser, there's a chance that could happen to me, at least according to my dermatologist. So they said there was a lower risk with the laser. I was like maybe 50-50 with the proper precautions and pretty high with electrolysis. They basically advised me to steer clear of that. But my facial structure in general, so like 
my chin. I'm not a fan of my chin because I feel like I got kind of like a butt chin thing going, um, which not a fan of, and just kind of like a square, I guess, like jawline in general. Like, I don't know, I guess I wish I had something a little more like rounded, uh, a little more like feminine. And while I'm wearing a wig right now, I do have like hair and I do have long hair, um, but I am very fearful of losing my hair. I'm getting to the age where um, it's going to start marching back soon. So I know they have like different uh, medications or creams that you can take to try to combat that. So I'll probably preemptively start those to try to keep my hair because I would be very sad if I lost my hair. I'm also pretty insecure about my shoulder width. Um, I wish it was not as wide. It might not look wide on camera, but I'm a relatively decent sized person. Like I'm six foot and I am, um, I guess my shoulder width is wider than most men's. So, you know, like I often want to look prettier and more feminine. And sure, bodies come in all shapes and sizes, but usually I have pretty wide shoulder width compared to most people, um, even if it doesn't look this way in the video because it's probably just in proportion to my body. Speaking of which, things that are bigger, feet. Um, I have pretty big shoe size, so I'm a size 13 in men's, 15 in women's, so that is really big. Um, makes shoe shopping pretty tough, and it's been something that's even outed me before, um, where I literally had a woman one time that's like, oh, I thought you were a woman until I seen your feet, and it's like, wow, thanks, dick. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, that's something that I'm aware of, especially since my feet outed me, which didn't think was going to happen, but I guess when you got big feet, good. I guess in terms of emotional and mental insecurities, I think like most of them probably revolve around love or relationships in general. Um, I have no problem finding dates or people that find me attractive. I do have fears that I will never find what I'm looking for in a partner though. Um, something that's I guess kind of egalitarian. So like I would like to be treated uh, in a way where on occasion I can be treated I guess in a stereotypically feminine way. So like most of the time I usually date women and uh, they usually want me to take on the masculine roles and they want to take on the feminine roles. Um, and I have no problem doing that, but like I would like it to be reciprocated. And a lot of times they're like, yeah, 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 like we'll definitely trade off and we'll throw this egalitarian, you know, and the feminist, like let's do this. And um, then it just doesn't happen. They just want to keep taking on the feminine roles. So while I have no problems finding dates or people finding me attractive, I do have problems with people treating me the way that I would like to be treated with dating. And it's not like it's like always like, oh, 100% masculine role. Like sometimes I've dated women that have tried, but like they'll be like, they'll do it for like five minutes and then it's like back to them, you know, wanting to be treated like a woman, which is fair. You know, that's how they've probably been treated most of their life. It's what they're expecting. It's what they want to. So I feel like maybe it's tough for people to give what they also want. Um, but I don't know. I feel like I'm just getting kind of like tired of that. Like, you know, I would like a girl to take me on a date, get me flowers, you know, like, kind of do stuff like that instead of just me doing that stuff. Um, but you know, I'm sure they're out there somewhere. It's just something I'm talking about because it's something I'm insecure about, even though I do know that it exists and I will find it one day, but you know, just 
my current track record makes it where it's like on the back of my mind because it's like reoccurring with like the different people I've dated. So uh, yeah, I would like to be treated a little more like a princess in the future. So yeah, I don't think my insecurities are super uncommon. I think a lot of people probably have insecurities that revolve around their looks or love or both. So I'm sure I'm not alone out there. Um, this has been pretty tough for me to make. Like I said, I usually try to avoid being vulnerable. Um, and for a long time in my life, I looked at it as a sign of weakness being vulnerable, but it's not, it's a strength. Um, and so it's something that I'm trying to work on. So I guess this video probably gives you a little more insight to what goes on in uh, my brain and yeah, uh, I guess it was nice to actually get it out there and share some of these thoughts. And on that note, I'm going to end. Thank you for watching and bye.